What if a single event could ignite the largest conflict the world had ever seen? Imagine it's 1914 and the world is a powder keg of political tension. Europe, a land of ancient rivalries and burgeoning empires, is a tinderbox waiting for a spark. That spark comes in the form of a bullet fired on a sunny morning in Sarajevo, the capital of Bosnia. The victim of this fatal shot is none other than Archduke Franz Ferdinand of Austria. Franz Ferdinand wasn't just any royal figure. He was the heir to the Austro-Hungarian Empire, a colossal power in Central Europe. His unexpected demise sends shockwaves through the corridors of power across the continent. The assassination is a direct affront to the Austro-Hungarian Empire, and they're not about to take it lying down. His death becomes the match that lit the fuse of what would become World War I. But let's step back a moment. The murder of one man caused a global conflict. Well, not exactly. The assassination was indeed the catalyst, but the ingredients for war had been simmering for some time. Europe was a maze of alliances, treaties and political engagements, a tangled web of obligations and loyalties. Nationalism was on the rise and the major powers were engaged in an arms race, each seeking to outdo the other in military might. Archduke Franz Ferdinand's assassination was the spark that ignited this volatile mix. Austria-Hungary, backed by their powerful ally Germany, issued an ultimatum to Serbia, where they believed the assassins had originated. When Serbia failed to comply fully, Austria-Hungary declared war. Through a domino effect of treaty obligations, other major powers were dragged into the conflict. This was no ordinary dispute. This was a clash of empires, a collision of colossal forces that would reshape the world. The assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand was more than just a tragic event. It was the ignition point for a conflagration that would rage for over four long years. And so, the stage was set for a war that would engulf the entire world. In the summer of 1914, the world was on the brink of a war, the likes of which had never been seen before. Nations across the globe, caught in the entangled web of alliances and treaties, found themselves preparing for a conflict that would redefine the world's political landscape. The stage was set with two major power blocks, the Central Powers and the Allies. The Central Powers, a coalition led by Germany, Austria-Hungary and the Ottoman Empire, were driven by a complex mix of nationalistic aspirations, territorial ambitions and perceived threats to their sovereignty. On the other side of the battlefield, the Allies, primarily composed of the United Kingdom, France and Russia, were motivated by the need to maintain the balance of power in Europe and uphold the principles of international law. A series of ultimatums, mobilizations and declarations followed the assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand of Austria-Hungary, setting off a domino effect that brought the world to war. Germany declared war on Russia on August 1st and two days later on France. The United Kingdom, bound by its treaty obligations, declared war on Germany on August 4th. The world watched in apprehension as armies were mobilized, navies set sail and the machinery of war roared into action. The air was heavy with tension as the world held its collective breath, waiting for the storm to break. This was not a war of kings or emperors. It was a war of nations, of peoples bound by the ties of alliance and duty. It was a war that would draw in soldiers from across the globe, from the deserts of the Middle East to the jungles of Africa, from the icy tundra of Russia to the bustling streets of London and Paris. The world was divided and the stage was set for a brutal and devastating conflict. The drums of war were beating and there was no turning back. The world was about to witness the dawn of a new era, an era marked by the thunder of guns and the cries of men, an era of World War I. Can you imagine living in a muddy trench for years under constant threat of enemy attack? Picture this, a vast network of trenches stretching from the English Channel to the Swiss border a scar across the landscape of Europe. This was the Western Front during the First World War. Here soldiers lived in squalid conditions, their lives dominated by mud, lice and the constant threat of artillery fire. The trenches were their homes, their battlegrounds and for many their graves. For long periods soldiers would huddle in these dugouts waiting for the call to go over the top, 
a command that often led to certain death in the no-man's land between opposing trenches. Trench warfare was a grim reality of the conflict, a cruel stalemate where neither side could gain a decisive advantage. The use of machine guns and barbed wire made it nearly impossible for infantry to break through enemy lines. Soldiers would charge across open ground only to be mowed down in their hundreds, their efforts leading to minimal territorial gains at a horrific human cost. One of the most infamous battles fought in this landscape of trenches was the Battle of the Somme. Starting in July 1916, the battle was intended to achieve a decisive victory for the British and French forces. However, it soon descended into a bloody stalemate with an unprecedented loss of life. On the first day alone, the British suffered more than 57,000 casualties, the bloodiest day in the history of the British Army. Over the next four months, the Somme turned into a killing field, with over one million men wounded or killed from both sides. The Western Front was a deadly stalemate, a testament to the horrors of modern warfare. The scars it left on the landscape were nothing compared to the scars left on those who survived, a generation marked by the brutality and futility of a war that was supposed to end all wars. But the war was not confined to the trenches of Europe. It was also fought in the seas and the skies. Indeed, naval battles were a critical part of the war, with the Battle of Jutland being arguably the most significant. In the North Sea, near the coast of Denmark, the British Royal Navy clashed with the Imperial German Navy in a colossal encounter. The British had the upper hand in terms of numbers, but the Germans, despite their smaller fleet, proved to be formidable opponents. The battle was a brutal display of maritime warfare, with both sides suffering heavy losses. Yet, despite the destruction, the Battle of Jutland ended inconclusively, with both sides claiming victory. The war at sea also saw the rise of a new weapon, the submarine. Silent and deadly, these underwater predators wreaked havoc on enemy fleets. The German U-boats were particularly effective, sinking numerous British ships and nearly choking off Britain's supply lines. The unrestricted submarine warfare adopted by Germany was a game-changer, forcing nations to adapt their strategies and causing a shift in the balance of naval power. But the war was not just beneath the waves, it also reached the heavens. The advent of aerial warfare introduced a new dimension to the conflict. Zeppelins, these giant airships, were used by the Germans for strategic bombing, while the British and French used them for reconnaissance. These floating fortresses were a sight to behold, but they were also vulnerable to attack and eventually gave way to the more agile and versatile fighter planes. The fighter planes were the knights of the sky, engaging in thrilling dogfights and bombing runs. The Red Baron, Manfred von Richthofen, emerged as a legendary figure, his Red Fokker Dr. I triplane becoming an iconic symbol of aerial combat. These air battles added a new layer of complexity to the war and pushed the boundaries of technology and tactics. The war had truly become a global conflict, fought on land, sea and air. After four long years of devastating conflict, the world was ready for peace. An armistice was signed on the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month in 1918, marking the cessation of the war that had consumed the globe. The guns fell silent and the world took a collective breath, eager to put the horrors of the war behind. But the war's conclusion was just the beginning of a new chapter. The human cost of the war was staggering. Millions of lives were lost, countless others were irrevocably altered. Families were torn apart, cities were razed to the ground, and entire nations were left to grapple with the physical and emotional scars of the conflict. Amidst this carnage, the world saw seismic political shifts. Empires crumbled, new nations were born, and the map of the world was redrawn. The most notable of these changes was the signing of the Treaty of Versailles in 1919. This controversial agreement, intended to ensure lasting peace, placed the blame squarely on Germany and imposed severe reparations that left the nation economically crippled. This punitive approach to peace, many historians argue, sowed the seeds for the next world war. The aftermath of the war also brought about significant social change. Women who had stepped into roles traditionally held by men began to demand equal rights. Revolutions were sparked, movements were born, and the world began to question long-held beliefs and systems. 
In the wake of the war, the world was forever changed. The lines of national borders were redrawn, the balance of global power shifted, and the societal norms were challenged. The echoes of World War I reverberated through the decades, shaping the course of the 20th century in profound and lasting ways. World War I left an indelible mark on the world, shaping the course of the 20th century in ways that are still felt today. The lessons we have learned from this global conflict continue to inform our understanding of war, peace and the human condition.